I'm Ryan, and I'm making Colorful Katana, a stylish samurai game inspired by Samurai Champloo, and a few of my favorite games such as Sekiro and Breath of the Wild. That's great and all, but I have a major problem. My game is boring. The combat base is there, but I've got nothing to make it pop or set it apart from other low-poly shovelware. Okay, so let's put our collective brain cells together and do a little bit of brainstorming. What makes a game fun? The main gameplay loop, obviously, but that's not quite what I'm getting at. Let's get a little more specific than that. Something that's not the gameplay loop, but can benefit the gameplay loop as it is. The icing on the cake, if you will. Yeah, I'm talking about game feel. One game that really nails game feel is a little pixel game released in 2012 called Hotline Miami, a game carried by its gore and quick visceral deaths. The gameplay is phenomenal of course, but in my opinion, the blood and gore are what keeps that game ingrained in the minds of gamers. Not to get morbid, but blood makes combat feel more exciting, impactful, and realistic. And that goes for all facets of media, not just games. In fact, it's an integral part of modern media in general when you really think about it. I mean, just off the top of my head, you've got Blue Bloods, There Will Be Blood, The Bloods in the Crypts, Rambo First Blood, Rambo First Blood Part 2, Tiger's Blood, The Blood of Christ. I mean, the list goes on and on. But I'm totally off on a tangent. What I'm trying to get at is that people, specifically gamers, love blood. Period. And this goes for plenty of games too. I mean, you've got Doom, Shadow of Mordor, Dying Light, Bloodborne, Hotline Miami, Cooking Mama, God of War. These are all popular games that lean into gore to make the player really feel powerful. And it sounds sort of messed up, but blood is awesome and increases game feel exponentially. Just look at Hotline Miami, a game carried by its gore and instant deaths. If I could describe that game in three words, they would be quick, brutal, and permanent. Quick and brutal are pretty self-explanatory, but permanent is a low-key, important part of Hotline Miami's bloodily brilliant experience. Your actions have consequences. Killing an enemy not only changes the game gameplay-wise, but it's a visual and environmental change as well. You, as the player, leave a mark on the world wherever you go. So, I have a few success targets for Colorful Katana in this devlog. First off, add blood and gore, specifically severing and slicing bodies in half, but also making those changes persist and affect the surrounding environment. So, let's get started. I've been messing around with this cool, somewhat realistic blood asset that I think will really complement the simpler, low-poly look of the game. On hits and death, blood is instantiated and splurts out of the enemy in question. I like the over-the-top distance and amount of blood that splurts from our enemies, I think it fits quite nicely. This blood effect persists on the ground and, when combined with ragdoll enemy carcasses and a grass shader that changes all surrounding foliage to a red bloody color, I think this achieves the permanence that Highline Miami does so well. The unbloodied enemy looks a little odd by itself though, so I ended up giving every enemy a blood shader that covers them in more and more blood on each hit. By the time they're about to die, they'll be totally covered in blood, with the goal of looking like a mangled carcass on the ground. And hey, bloodied carcasses make for great gameplay, that'll make the rules. I'm not sure how many more times I can say bloodied carcasses before the FBI shows up at my door, so let's move on to something a little less morbid. Gameplay is already feeling good, but our katana feels more like a butter knife than a killing machine. It's slicing our enemies just fine, but it's not slicing through them like I want. Take a look at Shadow of Mordor, a game that does dismemberment excellently with its brutal finishers. That is satisfying. This gives the player the feeling that they are actually influencing the game world around them, along with the excess body parts and blood littering the ground. That is what I want. I want limbs and torsos and heads flying around like it's Fruit Ninja. So, with that being said, I'm going to take a quick break, talk to my therapist, and then add dismemberment into my game. Be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the player now has a chance to slice through an enemy's torso on death. There's not much more to say, so I'm just going to let this combat encounter play out and you can see for yourself. As you can see, this is not your grandma's samurai game. No, 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 no. This is hardcore X-rated Giga Chad slicing and dicing. Not that Weenie Hut Jr. type shit. But anyways, I'll see what I can do in the future to maybe randomize what body parts being dismembered, but at the moment I'm pretty happy with the final product. Tell me what you guys think as well, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I think I've achieved the three pillars that so successfully prop up Hotline Miami. Quick, brutal, and permanent. Of course there's always more to do, and I have plenty more planned when it comes to combat. For example, I've got some ideas to juice up deaths and the blood system even more than it is now, but I think I'll save that for the next video, so just make sure to stay tuned. Now, when I know this devlog was a little on the shorter side content-wise, I just really wanted to get this video out, and at the same time I've been dealing with some really important personal things, so I hope that explains things. But before I go, I actually have a new little segment to introduce, where I read and react to some of your comments from previous videos. The support I received on the other devlogs was absolutely insane, so I just wanted to say thank you for that. 
And with that support came a crazy amount of comments, some super supportive and others providing really helpful feedback. So with that being said, welcome to the... Not sure if anyone already suggested this, use more distinct icons for each of the attacks as well as color code. This way, even people with severe color blindness can still make sense out of what's coming. And yeah, thanks for the feedback, I got about 50 bajillion comments detailing how the attack icons made people's eyes bleed. This is definitely one of the nicer ones. Making the icons more visually coherent and understandable is a definite priority for me. I think the end goal is commissioning icons in a graffiti style that look nice and fit with colorful katana's aesthetic. Speaking of graffiti, just want to add my random two cents and say that if you manage to somehow work the graffiti aesthetic into the combat effect, you get a constant feel of shampoo coming across. I really like the sound of graffiti and paint-based special attacks being either unlocked after defeating bosses or maybe being purchasable. That's still up in the air and it's going to require some playtesting. I'm picturing some sort of paint-based, colorful smoke grenade that stuns enemies, for example. I'd love to hear your thoughts on cool graffiti abilities that I can meld into combat. This next comment right here isn't really a big fan of the Steam capsule art, and uh, yeah, I'm with you. The current Steam art is totally placeholder for now. I'm looking to commission a professional to conjure up some sexy art for the Steam page, so if you have some experience making capsule art for Steam pages, definitely hit me up at this email with your portfolio. I wasn't super clear in Devlog Zero about the genre that Colorful Katana is, which I really regret. And now I have this comment here which is wondering what the hell this game even is, which is pretty fair. So I'm going to overcome my crippling indecisiveness and make an executive decision, right here, right now. Colorful Katana is an open world action RPG light, similar to that of Sekiro. The RPG elements will come from gaining abilities from defeating bosses, as well as an in-game currency that allows the player to buy items that upgrade their character. There you go, now you know. Anyways, subscribe, hit like, and most importantly, think about giving Colorful Katana a wishlist if you either like the game, enjoy these devlogs, or even, hey, maybe you're just a total freak who really likes dismemberment, I don't know. Whatever it is, I highly appreciate your support. See ya!